Oh, <laughs> who's springing on me like that? I asked you if you were ready. You, you said, know what? You said, stick it in, and here we are. You know I'm never ready. Well, I hope you're ready. Hope everybody's ready, because here we are, folks, for another fun-filled, exciting adventures episode of This is the Future. Unfortunately. Damn right. Damn right. How was, uh, how was, how was your week, dude? Ah, uh, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> i feel like i feel like i'm talking to you in canada like, oh it took a second to hear you <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> uh, it's real snowy out there. the reception's bad oh, don't you know or, uh, <laughs> yeah just hanging on having a glass of maple syrup you know? yes i was hoping you would fucking say that yes <laughs> oh the maple syrup <laughs> It's very fine this time of year. What is it, was that Irish? What I don't know who. What's going on? Oh shit! It was one hundred percent maple. That's what it was. Uh, mm. uh, that's, how, that's how you talk after you've been licking maple trees all day. Oh, that, a, that was funny. I was hoping you would say that. I was like, say, say syrup, say it, <laughs> say syrup. <laughs> say it. <laughs> this maple drink is mighty fine. <laughs> maple drink. It's like it's like purple drink. You know, maple drink maple maple's a bit overwhelming for me like it's i only do it in syrup man i had maple cookies i didn't like them it's, no. a, it's an odd flavor it is very um yeah like just kind of like pow right there like maple sweet as fuck and then the end is like kind of like licking a stack of papers it's yeah it's a <laughs> It's, it's, it's sugar good. and wood. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's sugar and wood. That's what maple is. That's what maple is. Sugar. <laughs> some sugary wood. <laughs> oh, you want some sugary wood, eh? It's the opposite yeah. of, of like sugar cane, you know. That doesn't now for dessert, doesn't really... we have our, our finest sweet oak. It's a very, it's a sugary pine. Uh, go ahead and... Uh, uh, we got our fresh uh, dessert lumber. Uh, menu. <laughs> right. yeah. Give it a lick. Mind the splinters. Okay. All, all the pastry chefs uh, dress up like lumberjacks. Instead of be, yeah, everyone's wearing flannel. It, well, it's kind of like, you know, getting a snack in your neck of the woods. Yeah, you're fucking chopping loaves of bread in half with axe. With, with <laughs> axes and chainsaws. <laughs> what are they, day-olds or some shit? You shouldn't yeah. have to chop it with an axe. It's 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 dessert lumber, <laughs> new from Canada. All right, hopefully everybody's keeping up with this shit. We're talking about maple syrup and eating and yeah, eating maple trees. Sugary wood. Mm. Sugary wood. Yeah, man. We were just we were just talking about how uh, how boring you know things are kind of boring right now. Yeah, um, things are boring. But you I know what? To, I was supposed to go to a hockey game on. Tuesday, I took off work. I bought my I bought my mom tickets for Christmas, and we drove up to the game. And there's those construction signs that are flashing games ca games postponed. Oh, like, uh, really? The fuck! <laughs> like, I missed that. I missed it. There was no one else up there, so I was like I missed this one. I don't. I didn't even have a clue. Everyone's like, "Oh, they said that last night." I'm like, "Well, why didn't somebody text me and tell my dumbass? Because I don't have cable. I didn't right. really cancel the fucking game. Well, they so, didn't I, like send you an email or something." I felt like someone, I, no, not to my knowledge. I, if I did it, well, I didn't see it. Usually it, it's so confusing. You get texts and emails and then you're like, I'll get back to that in a second. And then you can't find it. So right. sure. I'm sure someone notified me, but either way, drove up there and then went to your favorite fucking restaurant. For all of you who don't know, and if you're ever looking for gift ideas for Alex, there's one restaurant that he prefers above all else and you can get gift cards. It's called Cracker Barrel. That's right. Alex fucking loves Cracker Barrel. Don't listen to his shit. He fucking loves it. He's a huge fan. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. Uh, uh. I fucking hate this guy. He ruined that shit for me. You don't understand. Like, that's just how, that's just what there is to eat here. Like, unless you want Chick fil A, but they're not open on Sundays. Everything else, it's what there is. So that's where you sit down and you eat that shit. But well, Alex, ruined it for me by telling me the truth what did i what did i say you said everything's microwave yeah anything in those like uh chain restaurants applebee's 
sure. PJF Fridays or whatever. Um, Sherry's, you know, I think they're, I don't know if they're out there, but you know, Sherry's. Yeah, yeah, any, right. They're, it's all microwave shit. Like, I think probably the most real food you could get in any of those places is probably like an egg because it's, you know, it's, it's in a shell, you know, it's probably right. the most real food in all of those places. But yeah, so, um, yeah, sorry. Sorry, but yeah. Still getting you a gift card. Everyone else, seriously, send this fucker a gift card for Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> he doesn't like it. <laughs> Please do, because when you come out here, I'll take you there. Yeah. Well, you should fucking go to one, you asshole. <laughs> yeah, I'll, you know what? I'll take you there. I'll take you and drop you off. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I got my own apron. It's got 30. I got an, an apron with 30 stars on it, because that's how long I've been eating at that shithole. <laughs> you got a lot of flair. That's right. Well, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I think if you've noticed, like when you work there, I mean, I go there. I was just there the other night. It's like, hey, welcome back, asshole. Right. You got your name on the on the brown Cracker Barrel. Uh, what is that thing called? Apron. And then you get a couple of stars on there. But no one gets past four stars for some reason. But I have 30 on mine because I've yeah. been, like I said, I'm a loyal fan. I believe you. Well, it, you know what? It's it's all right. It doesn't really give me the shits. I have checked. So that's cool. Oh, well, at least, hey, there's a plus side to everything, you know? Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I don't know. There's, where, I mean, where do you eat? If you're on the road, where do you eat? If I was, like, not in Portland? just like Yeah, you just, you're, ro you road trip. You guys were in the, you the band. You guys came out here all the way to fucking New Jersey. Um, there, like, when, when we are, when I was on tour with the band opening for them, they, we got, um, like per diem money or whatever, you know, we are, we got a certain amount of food money mm -hmm. every day, like $20 a day for food. So we, we just really, we just went to like, uh, um, grocery stores and used the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, no, like really, I go like went to like a safe way or right. where like, so, like a, a store like, or Walmart and got like, cold sandwiches or nuts and a bag of well, you can stretch 20 bucks further in a grocery store than you can in a restaurant yeah hands but, like, but like if we were we never went to fat we never did fast food or anything like that on that trip but um or like at the venue ate at the venue if they had food right but anytime any other time i've been on the road for like comedy like or, or just like traveling in general was like a random restaurant or just like fast food shit you know yeah gross food yeah it's a bummer that the, the sit down restaurants that they're all microwaving shit back there but it's not just you saying that and i don't know how people get away with this but i've noticed a lot of employees just general employees of shit jobs have been making tiktok videos of how things are done in restaurants everything yeah and i'm just like is it are you gonna get in trouble for that or like i mean i we weren't allowed to say it's just weird when i was coming through those shithole jobs like you couldn't say anything like that you couldn't sure as fuck couldn't out them on the internet right and here they are like here's how they make lobster at, Lo at red lobster and it's like boil in a bag or i don't know it's just yeah i'm like i mean duh you know it comes in on a frozen fucking food truck sat yeah. in a truck stop all night while you got a blow job from a three tooth hooker i get it you know, I totally get it, but Sally, I love it. Look like the picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it I, probably tastes like the picture. If you lick that laminated, if shit you like, lick that, if you like, lick yeah, picture, yeah, that's what it tastes, tastes like. like. <laughs> tastes like buttery paper. <laughs> I, I, sugary used... wood, buttery paper, whatever. It's all bullshit, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we love to eat our recyclables. You know? <laughs> we were out of food years ago. Have you, you seen <laughs> Soylent Green? <laughs> can't recycle wood i'm not talking about um, <laughs> um I'm sure you could turn it into sawdust and then it gets added sure, into food sure. isn't that true it's filler um i used to know a guy that used to work at a sherry's um in red in redmond and he said that like they had prime rib on the menu and they just got like pre-cut prime rib already half cooked pre-cut prime rib and like cryovac'd in yeah. like plastic right well and they and they just cut cut the plastic open and what they did is they put it on a plate 
They and they on the plate they put a piece of green leaf lettuce, the prime rib, put some A1 sauce on it, another piece of green, green leaf lettuce, and then microwaved it for a minute. And then that's how they cook the prime rib at Sherry's. Hmm. That uh, what okay. I don't I don't know a lot about food, but it doesn't sound right. I never cooked a steak like that. No, it's not how you should. <laughs> so why do they do this for efficiency? Yeah. And it's cheaper. Like just prime rib. Like prime rib. It's in the name. It's prime. It's it's grade A. It's the right. you know, it's choice. It's what you know, that's why it's called that. And so it's really expensive and it's labor, you know, like it takes time to cook. And then after you cook it, you can't cool it and then reheat it. You're not supposed to, you're supposed to keep it at like 105 or 110 temp or something like that. And it's supposed to be underneath a lamp and you yeah. cut it to order, right? That's what yeah. you're supposed to do. So they do that for money and efficiency. And you, and then, and then you don't have to hire cooks that have a lot of skill. You could just hire anybody that could put a bunch of lettuce, put salad on top of meat and then put it in the microwave. Could you imagine like some, some young kid gets to start at a place like that in the back and then he has this, then the fan, like they put him in charge of Thanksgiving dinner and he's busting out <laughs> the lettuce and the cardboard. And <laughs> whatever oh, the fuck is... it takes to make a five-star <laughs> meal at fucking Red Lobster. <laughs> yeah. Right here at home. Oh my God. That's just, that's such a shame. <laughs> We're getting, oh man, those pictures are the best part of that meal. I swear to God. I always like doing that too. I'm like, that one. I always like hit the picture. I'm like, this one, this one right here. Give me that picture right there. I want to, I bet it tastes just like it. God damn it. Yeah, um, you bummed me out. When you told me that, I was like, fuck me. I was like, I thought I was getting something real. I'm like, no. Nope. Yeah. Sorry to bust, burst that bu bubble for you. Well, and you know, they have some specials that they make and they throw it in a pot. And then when that's gone, it's gone. You know, that kind of thing. Like, there's some fresh stuff you can get. I mean, I don't know how fresh, but, they're, but they run out of it. That's how you know it's fresh. It's right. the shit they still have at 10 o'clock at night where you're like, hmm. Well, see, there's like, there's certain things that are okay, in my opinion. You know, a good, pro a good frozen product is a good frozen product, you know? Like, you don't have to make French fries, you know? You could get right. frozen French fries. That's normal and good. Shut up. Um, you got when, mail. When you um, are microwaving, you know, steak and stuff like that, I think it gets a little. Yeah, I don't better. fucking do that. And I don't even know how to cook. And I, I use it like a grill. And yeah. Shit. Hmm. But, you know, just weird, uh, weird things that you learn about food service when you work in it for, for a long time. Hmm. That's a Not damn everything. shame. Too bad the really good restaurants aren't open late and, you know, all over the place. Right. You don't have a choice out there on the fucking road, man. No, you kind of get what you get. Well, and here it's, you're surrounded by corporate restaurants. That's all it okay. is. It's chains up the ass. It's just like, oh, another, hey, that's a familiar spot. Like, right. yeah, we went down to the Cracker Barrel in Baltimore off 395, you know, X 17B. Yep, that's where we went. Heard good things. Didn't really agree with them. Yeah. <laughs> really good things to agree with them <laughs> um oh, but how you been man what's uh what's going on with uh old tony over there not much that was it <laughs> oh to cover that okay no i'm just saying like i really mm -hmm. it's it was cold as fuck out and beyond that there wasn't much going on i tried to go to a hockey game that didn't happen yeah and they'll they'll reschedule it to some day that no one can go so that'll uh That'll be fun, but I think like everyone else, I'm just waiting for the sun to stay out a little bit longer. Sure. Yeah. You just this is the shitty, this is the hard part of the year. I mean, really. Unless you just like you have some inside hobby that you live for. Like this. Well, I live for it. <laughs> once a week. <laughs> Hang <Yeah>. in there. <laughs> um so our neighbors, and they're real pretty close to us, like I I I could like almost touch them from touch their house from my backyard. They're pretty fucking close. Um, they're getting a new roof put on their house and the workers start at like seven, seven fucking 30 in the morning. Yep. 
you know, and I don't go to bed until like 1.30 or 2 because I get off, I get home at 12.30, mm-hmm. take a shower, relax, and then before I know it, it's like 1.30 or 2. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the fuck, and then all I hear is like, pat, 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 like fucking people hitting, hitting, the, hitting nails with a hammer and like people like, you know from up here dropping a bunch of wood on the ground you know and just <laughs> and you could it was happening but there was a beeping there it is i don't know if you can hear that yeah it's been going on all morning fucking beeping noise was somebody using an electronic level or something i think it's a they a truck <laughs> That's just backing up I, I don't know. all day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is. It's like Wayne's World too. Like when they're like, "What are you guys doing over there?" Oh, we just got to make sure there's plenty of watermelons at all times, just right here stacked up. And then every few minutes, these guys walk by with a plate glass, this piece of plate glass. Every few minutes, make sure there's plenty of chickens over here. <laughs> that sucks. I don't know. That's my- something that always drove me nuts, though, is exactly what you're talking about: is working hours. Like they figure that the average person, you know, works from nine to five, which is total bullshit. But yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. It's like seven thirty in the morning, you know, and they're off they go with no regard. They'll be done by the, four. And here's the thing: is like I get it. They're they're working. It's their job. That's fine. It's more I put it on the people that own the place, and be like, I feel like they should ask the the people that they hired. Be like, hey, we got neighbors surrounding us maybe do you think you guys could start a little bit later in the morning maybe like nine or ten they won't but they won't but like i just feel like they should ask and the, you know be nice to our fucking neighbors they're fucking dickheads but if they would be like hey fucking we're having a new roof put on our house i'm sorry for all the noise hopefully be wrapped up soon but they're fucking dick. So my dog, Emma, they have a little dog. It's like little like handicapped little dog. Like it's got a little hitch in his giddy up and it's got eyes over here. It's all. <laughs> it should be put down. It's like ugly. the dog from Monsters. Was it Monsters, Inc.? <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure. I'm sure. It's got like <laughs> four right, eyes and six legs. And uh, it's like this. It's like this big. It's a tiny little thing. It's like. Uh, and it was in its backyard, like, and like in its moving backyard. around, and 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 Emma saw it, and she took off and was barking at it through the fence, you know. And then the owner was like, picked up the dog, was like, "It's okay, it's okay." And I was like, "They're dogs. That's what they do." And I was like, "Hey, I'm Alex. I've lived here for a couple of years. You know, welcome to the neighborhood." And she just like had her stupid little dog and looked at me like. <clears throat> And like just cold shouldered me. And I was just like, my hand was out. I was like, all right, bye. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, fuck them. <laughs> wow. Can you hear me? <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> now they got the roofers pissed off. <laughs> the, the, no, the man, roof- not to defend them, but when I work construction, they start as soon as they can based upon the whatever and because of daylight. Yeah. Main no, thing. And I'm I'm not I I'm not even talking about the workers. Yes, they're loud and no, stuff. I you're talking about just your neighbors being a I'm fucking respectful the, human beings, right? Yeah, just at least be like, hey, I know it's loud, but you know, everyone needs a roof. Roof is shitty, you know? Like, yeah, I get it. At least fucking it's a, it, it's shitty to find out when you're laying in bed. You're like, ah, oh, finally got to sleep, and then you hear, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, and it ain't gonna be hard told to sleep us. through. It. <laughs> and if you're not hearing it every day, you're not gonna sleep through it. You're up, right? You're fucked. Yep. So you're like, shit, I gotta come home and go to bed. And then that day they they don't work or whatever. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Total fucking pain in the ass. Yeah. So. That's what I've been dealing with, but um, I've also been trying to watch a lot more and listen to um, 
a lot of stuff I used to, like kind of like bringing back the old stuff, you know, like music and and uh, comedy. Like I've I listened to that old George Carlin uh, um, album. I think he the, the last one he did before he died. It's bad for you. Yeah, love that uh, one. I've, I've been listening to that a lot lately, and that's pro- that's pro- that's my favorite one. I don't know if it's if people would consider it his best one, but it's definitely my favorite one. I liked it a lot. Miss favorite, my favorite joke of his right now is on that record where he's just like, um, "Picture your parents in hell. Picture your mother in hell. Baking pies without an oven." Yeah. <laughs> it's the yeah. Fucking line of my life. Pies <laughs> without an oven. <laughs> I want that shit on a t-shirt, man. Uh, like with an image of grandma standing in hell. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that, that Just almost... another five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon pies without without an oven. <laughs> um, yeah, that album so that's good. That's what that's the one with all the jokes in it about um about dying and everything. Yeah. And just like <laughs> did you hear Bill died? Bill, yeah, Bill Davis died. I just saw him yesterday. Yeah, didn't help. <laughs> didn't help. Died anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, for everyone else listening to this shit, that's one of my, obviously, uh, George Carlin, his last album, It's Bad For You, it was called. Uh, special, it's on Amazon. It's definitely on Amazon. Anyway, great. I think we may have mentioned it before, but if you want to hear a great George's last last hour special is called It's Bad For You. Talks about di- death and dying. It's great. Funny yeah. as hell. Um, so yeah, so you've been listening to that. What other stuff you've been digging into? That um um I found there's a new David Tell. No shit. Yeah. Um see, and that's the thing is I've been me and my friend Alan have been talking about this for a long time and he, like he brought up a good point. Like he, my friend Alan has seen David tell probably like four or five times. And each time it was a new hour, hmm. but David tell only has one special. And we always, I'm just wondering like, why didn't he until now put something out? You know, like, I don't know if it's because it's like, he just want, he just, doesn't like i don't know i don't know what it is he doesn't want to get canceled i don't know <laughs> you know what i mean um, yeah i guess that's fair so he just like he does new hours often but he never records them but he did put something out and it is not comedy it is music he put out a music album hmm. and um and i've heard this about david tell before just like through word of mouth that he makes he makes like hip hop and rap beats he doesn't rap or anything. He just like makes he likes the beats, makes the music, and boy, it's weird. It sounds. <laughs> it's, it's so, I'm not saying it's bad or even boy, good. It's, weird. it's just fucking weird. It's and when you think about, it, you're like, okay, well, yeah, David Tell made this, so yeah, it's fucking weird. It's like a, it's like <laughs> it sounds kind of like scary clown hip hop. It's like some of it's like weird high pitched noises and then like, and then there's a beat behind it and you're like what the fuck is going on it's like you flip out you flip over the newest icp record this was produced by dave attell get the yeah. fuck out of here <laughs> yeah and I, I i've heard that that he likes to do that and i've heard that he has i've heard i don't know for sure don't you know hold me to it but i've heard that he's played like small little clubs in in new york and stuff probably just doing his beats so i don't know but it's fucking strange i don't even know the i don't even remember the name of the album but if you want to check it out go to any streaming service i'm sure it's there it's on itunes it's just it's 2021 the newest david tell I, at first, when I saw it, I was like, I thought it was just someone made an art piece and named it David Hell, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then I then I clicked on it, and it's like underneath his catalog, it's it's you know has his has two he has two albums on there. It's his only one, and then this one, and it has his bio, and it's I'm like, this is David Hell. <laughs> it's fucking weird. <laughs> 
I don't. Yeah, um, I don't know. I guess maybe he's just. He was always more of a road comic, and then he had that show going on on MTV. Was it on MTV? What was the one called? He did the late night thing. Oh yeah, that was on Comedy Central. Oh my bad, Comedy Central. Late night with David Tell. Was that what it was called? No, no, it was. Um, that doesn't make any sense. What? Where he like went around and like drank? Yeah, a lot he used to. Like, he parties. yeah, he went. He was in Philly one time, and he started Asamia, some shit. Asamia? And that's Asamia. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had that show. Um, David yeah. Tell Insomnia. That was um. I don't know. All I know is that I heard I heard him on um, and this might be on his special. I don't know if I've ever heard his special, but I heard him on XM Radio one time years ago, and one of his jokes was um, I went to Akron, Ohio. You know what there's to do in Akron, Ohio? Pack the fuck up and leave. Pack the fuck up. One of my favorite jokes of all time. Like you can, and I've heard other comics use it in other places, but you know, first time it fucking cracks me up. I love jokes like that. Um, but yeah, with comedy in mind, I definitely would like to, um, two things. First, I'll say this. I recently read something, maybe you saw it. Steve Harvey was quoted, uh, interviewed recently and they were asked, he's starting, he's going to be like a judge Judy type. He's got a show starting. Um, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. And he said that he has, um, he has one more comedy special in him and he's not doing it until he's, until he's done, done with all of his TV shows. Cause he's like, I'm not, I'm not getting canceled. He's like, the only person that I can think of that wouldn't get canceled would be Dave Chappelle. And that's because Chappelle's career is based upon subscriptions, like subscriptions. Yeah. And everybody else's shit is based upon them having TV work and whatnot. So they can actually get fired. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. And also kind of just, I don't know, just maybe a little like sink into my chair a little bit, kind of like, uh. yeah. but that's yeah. weird. I mean, you got... He's and I don't that. even think Steve Harvey is offensive. <laughs> I'm like, fuck me, man. Like, what? it's funny that you and I took a it was like, aren't doing comedy, at least not on the regular. You know, we aren't doing comedy right now. It's funny. I'm sure there was a lot of people that were like, just going to put my notebook over here for a while. You know, mm -hmm. I keep my thoughts in there, but mm -mm. it's right. stupid. It, it's got me nervous. You know, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want some asshole to Google me and figure out where the fuck I work and, it's, right and all it's this, really yeah. crazy that you can get away with that so you know fuck it you guys win you can have your no comedy for you <laughs> oh well no new <laughs> ideas flowing good luck with yeah, that shit like yeah. steve harvey said how many jokes about cats and dogs can you fucking make a joke has to be about something or somebody or it doesn't work right so someone it has to joke has to be on somebody some it has to until sure. you're ready for that all the comics are going away and that's the ones that just really, really, really want to keep working and they'll they'll bow down to your shit. But with that being said, I would like to um, just make a give a nod to Bob Saget um, as he did pass away. Very surprisingly, did not yeah. expect to read that fucking headline, nor did a lot of comics. That I've I was surprised. Into. I was like, "Whoa, okay." I was yeah. like, "Hold up, Bob, Bob, like Bob seems like the kind of guy that they find like with a, you know, maybe like a thing around his neck, and he's jerking off." Everyone I've been talking to has been saying that. <laughs> we talk about. I talked about it with people, and they're, you know, like they're like, "Do you know how he died?" I'm like, "God, they just found him. I don't know if it was suicide or he had a heart attack." And everybody, I, I've, I've talked to multiple people, and they, and they, they just go, "But like, what about?" And they make it. Like, <laughs> And then make the jacking off. They're like, what about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's always that. Everyone's like. <laughs> it really looks like you're, you're driving a chopper motorcycle and masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> you think you died jet jerking off on a motorcycle? <laughs> it's how you get, get in, initiated into my gang is you have to jack off while you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make sure so everyone could see what I'm doing. <laughs> My dick is up here. That's where it's <laughs> for this joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it was it's a it's a bummer because you know it seems it seems like uh Bob Saget was a cool guy. Everyone always says he was said he was a cool guy. Um his comedy was weird. It was just like a shock comic, basically. Yeah, he's and it's weird too. It's like I didn't even know this shit, and you don't know stuff about people until they die. But he was actually from Philly, in the area, and he went to Temple University like Cosby did. 
<laughs> but in any case, I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, he. Um, so he's a Philly native. He's an, he was an Eagles fan. All that shit. So that's what was funny when he died. It's like everything around here. Everybody's like, "Holy shit, Bob Saget!" You know, it's like you guys yeah. know who Bob Saget is. And you're like, uh, "Yeah, he's an Eagles fan." They're like, oh, that's why we give a shit about him. Okay, not because he said some fucked up shit in the '80s when he was coked out with fucking people's home movies. Like that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shit you want to know about Bob Saget. Is he ran that whole America's Funniest Videos shit? Like, out of the, I think like he would. I don't know what they said. Basically, it involved cocaine, and he did all the voices, like the cat voices, everything. I would love to see some of that really? shit again, and knowing that Bob was doing all the voices for the cats, the dogs, the impressions, everything. Right. Huh. And then he put on his his, his his little his outfit and go up there and record, you know, do and record the episode. So he worked his ass off. I like that a lot. And I guess also he um sounds like, you know, he had a kid, kids at some point, so he stopped. He, he needed to be a parent, so he stopped mm. doing comedy for a while, and that's why he fell out. Um, and then everything I've read about him this week has all said the same thing. He did America's Funniest Videos, he's a stand-up, and then he had this great line in Half-Baked. So at every, like, obituary, like, every magazine, it all says, <laughs> you ever suck dick for Coke? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, his, that's his line. Like, that's going to be on his fucking tombstone. Ever suck dick for Coke? <laughs> like, yeah. That's why everybody's thinking the whole, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, definitely he seems like a horny guy. He's a dirty motherfucker, so that's why everyone's like, he looks like the kind of guy that would hang himself by his jerking right. off. And he did he full house for great. a long, a long time. He did full house. So, oh yeah, but right, yeah. I kind of like. I forget. I guess I forget. I, I have a hard time picturing that. I have a hard time picturing him as a dirty ass comedian. But when you watch him do a um, the arist his aristocrat, like you see him do an aristocrat, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> and on Full House, he was just historically known for like pissing off all the parents. Because he, between sets, between recording, he was being a, an R-rated comic. Right. Yeah, like right. the Olsen twins and everybody else. No wonder they're all fucked up. Um, <laughs> Bobby's over there telling <laughs> dick jokes to three-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I watched, uh, after he died, I, I watched uh, uh, some of his, some, I watched his roast. Have you seen his roast when they, they, they roasted him on Com Comedy Central? I don't know. I've seen a few here and there. I love watching those old roasts. I think that some of them are really funny. Um, man, that, that, that was a good one. His roast was fucking good because, you know, John Stamos was there, you oh, know. Fuck. Uh, He's great. No, Norm MacDonald was, uh, roasted him. And he just, Norm, Norm MacDonald did like the, such a Norm joke. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> he said something, to, I'm probably going to butcher it, but he said something around, around the lines of like, uh, Bob Saget, you know, he's, a, he's an ugly guy. Look at him. He's got a face like a cauliflower. <laughs> and then he stopped and like, and kind of turned to the side and looked at him. He goes, a face like a cauliflower. <laughs> and that was his whole joke. <laughs> you know, and everyone else is like doing like, you know, like, crazy like bob saget's a dirty old man and he fucked olsen twins those kind of jokes you know like <laughs> all, and then and norm mcdonald's just like, he's got a face like a cauliflower <laughs> a face like a cauliflower <laughs> spent a lot of time on that joke there norm <laughs> I, I thought it was i made me laugh really hard um, and then gilbert godfrey is probably one of my favorite roasters because he's just yelling and slapping his the podium. fucking delivery is great he's holding court when he's up there no matter what he's yeah. saying and he uh his whole joke he was like <laughs> it was pretty fucked up but he was like back in the 90s bob second <laughs> raped and killed a girl <laughs> that's, his, <laughs> that's what gilbert godfrey said <laughs> um, it was pretty it was fucked up sorry but that's it was fuck. It was and Bob Saget's dying laughing. He's fucking like pissing himself. It's it was great. Um, that's what I did to remember Bob Saget is, is, is watch his roast. Fuck, that's funny. Oh my god. <sighs> but yeah, it's um, you know, and it, it's cool to it's cool to hear 
people talk about you know when people pass you know it sucks that you know it takes someone dying for someone for us to remember them you know it's kind of weird but you know i listened to bill burr talk about bob Saget and how like they were actually really cl cl close friends for like the last 15 years mm -hmm. they, they would text each other they were super good friends you know and you know bill burr was getting kind of kind of emotional He's, he was really bummed out he was like you know we told each other you know like you know we loved each other we told each other that like they were really close friends i guess oh damn you know he's just saying about how, how good of a guy bob saget was you know really nice guy you know um but yeah it's, it's a bummer it's random it's, it was a rant i was like whoa okay fuck <laughs> right no it was yeah it was uh it's they keep it seems like every week somebody's dying so yeah yeah. someone of merit but you know that's at least like i said like no one has anything bad like i don't have anything bad to say about him you know what i mean it's funny and that's it so good on right. it seems like he lived a decent life and but, he, um, he was he was uh, older than i thought he was he's, he's 65 65 yeah yeah not that that's like crazy old i just didn't no, think... i mean these days that's young like, yeah you know i, I think mean and he's in his 60s in his 60s you know I mean, fuck, that's long enough. I mean, but yeah, I mean, sixty. That's how many times can you fucking do this? <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> Shit. Well, yeah, man. Um. So yeah, so my hats off to a couple of. Uh, which looks like we end up talking about dead comics today. So there we go. <laughs> 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 but um. Aside from uh, comedy, we did pick a we picked a cool you picked a cool album that we landed on this week. Um, yeah, um, the band was uh, Slint, mm -hmm. and the album was Spiderland. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, um, they're kind of one of those bands that was they're kind of obscure, kind of like they were in the indie alternative scene back in the nineties, and they. A lot of people, um, alternative post-punk kind of kind of thing. Um, a lot of people consider this like a real important album. This right. album in particular um, was put out in ni uh, '91, and it was my friend, my friend, my next door neighbor, Scott. He's the one. Um, he kind of got me. He showed me Slint. You know, I never heard of him until then until like a year ago and uh i listened to him a couple times liked it and then i I wanted to put it on the show so i kind of like stopped, tried to not listen to it because i like wanted to have right but um yeah i think it's a good album uh, what'd you think um so like i didn't that's one of those it's an album for me where i didn't know that i actually knew one of the songs on the album mm -hmm. but I listen to the whole thing and it's got like for me it's it's cool because they're not they're not radio hits there's like what six or eight tracks they were just they were they had something to say well mainly the the drummer i just watched i literally just watched a documentary about them um but the drummer was like the driving force behind the band yeah and this album they said basically this album um was one of a kind very unique no one ever heard anything really like this music before and that's why it was so big it's so important i'll say but as far as like me listening to it the first time i listened to it i was it was i was like oh, this is all right and then i got to the end and i was like i got to the last track which is good morning captain which yeah is, i think is there like that's the main that's the hit if you will right um that's when i realized that these guys a lot a couple of these songs i believe show up on a soundtrack it's probably obscure but i listened to this it's the kids soundtrack yeah this they're on there and when i heard them i heard that last track i was like racking my brain i'm like all right i know this shit sure. it's got to be right. on one of these soundtracks and then um i found it um it's not on the you i hate that sound like the sounds the whole soundtrack isn't on spotify pieces of it are the slint out the slint songs are not in the soundtrack so i guess they weren't they didn't get permission to put it in the soundtrack oh, right. but in any case um so once I heard that song, it took me back 20 years because 
I found the album Kid, the excuse me, the the movie Kids through some skateboard punk friends of mine, um, and that movie's a lot like that. And then that sound, that I don't know, that song really identified the '90s for me, like as far as like anti, like I listened to that soundtrack a shitload. Like I just I don't know, it was just the kind of music it was was different, and you know it was cool, but it wasn't mainstream. So. By the end of the first time I listened to the album, I was like, holy shit, I'm going to listen to this seven more times. And then I did. And it's really fucking good. And the other one that I like is Washer. As far as I like the whole album, seriously. Right, but those are your favorites. Washer's the other one that I really like. And um, I don't know what you know about them, but what I was able to find out was they're from Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Not a shitload of bands from Louisville. So, right. um, Or at least it sounds like this, you know. Right, exactly. And the cool thing is, is that dude's parents were like the drum, like the drummer's parents were like the driving force behind it. His dad was a professional piano player and let them go into the basement and do all this crazy shit back then, you know. So I don't know, just some cool stuff in there. Neat fucking band. Yeah. But awesome fucking. It just had, I wouldn't understand the lyrics. And I didn't, I was still watching the documentary when we started this, but in any case, it, it's, it's interesting because he's basically like, it's kind of like he's telling, there's telling stories. Really, that's what it is. And then the music's on top of it. Like almost, right. almost, you almost can't hear what they're saying. Right. And I uh, like that. I like that they came up with that. Yeah. It's a, uh, when I, when I heard this, I was like, oh, this is what Modest Mouse was trying to be. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I thought. I was like, this is what Isaac Brock was trying to do. Did you come up with some awesome but fucking crazy shit? I never know what's going to come out of your mouth with music. Or I mean, you're he always says, I, fuck me, man. <laughs> like, you I, don't never tied the, I like where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I love you about it now. You see the some, you like, see the sim- some sim- similarities in the, in the two sounds. Like, I feel like this is like slint was pretty original with the way they sound and i feel like that's what modest mouse was trying to do was that kind of style of this indie punk kind of sounds kind of you know they have something to say but it also like kind of sounds like depressing in a way and like like it has like the the music it's like punk but like not punk it's this post-punk kind of weird you know I don't know, tight pants, striped shirt kind of thing. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> that's a, that's, yeah. I would have never, yeah, that's fucking far out, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, wow, all right. <laughs> um, we have mashed potatoes and monster trucks, and here's how they <laughs> connect. <laughs> so, th- th- right? Th- I just, yeah, that's that, like I said, it's not that's why I feel dumb when you say shit like that. I'm like, huh? <laughs> but it's a valid point. Seriously, that's that's a whole nother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking dumbfounded. Over here. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking more like the other like Fugazi shit like that, you know, but yeah, yeah well, well, it, it totally is that it totally is like like Fugazi. I think you you nailed it with that for sure. Right. Um, I'm not like a, I'm not a fan of Modest Mouse. I, I feel like that they were that's what that's what they were trying to do. And, you know, in my opinion, missed the mark. My opinion. Well, they still but, uh, right. Well, I am a fan of Modest Mouse, and I get where you're coming from. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm I don't listen to a lot of bands that uh, have banjos in them. So Modest Mouse is one of the few. But right. um, right. But these guys, I like these. This album's like it's it's dark and the, well the, like i said the really the driving force behind the whole thing is the drummer they're all they all were good musicians but the drummer like basically had a breakdown after the album so that usually tells you it was a good fucking record and he they put everything they had into it where yeah. they were going with it um and it's just really i like it and i like that i've the well, reason i like that that sound is because, like I said, a few of those songs are in that movie Kids, and Kids is a fucked up movie, like really fucked up. But they're playing that music while there's a lot of like the whole movie's stressful. But while they're showing New York scenes of like creepy, gritty life, like they're put those two together. They put that the couple of their songs, including uh, "Hello, Good Morning, Captain," 
and just showing like i don't know if you know the movie at all but the, oh, the girl course, trying yeah. to track down the dude to tell her the horrible fucking news she has and yeah. here's this ah, you know like just all of it pushed together like that song and that movie to me every time i hear that song i just picture all that shit from that movie yeah. and it's so and every time I hear this song, I'm just like, it's fucking gritty, 90s, New York City, like, even though they're from goddamn Kentucky. Yeah. Still, I, the one part I want to know is, I don't even know if it's at the end of this thing I'm watching, but I want to know how they've, like, how this person making this movie found that band. I always like that shit. It's like, how did you find them? Because you found them right after, you know, right when you're making your movie. Right. Yeah, I don't know. The underground art scene, oh, I always think it's interesting when someone, when a, a director makes a movie, but finds, knows awesome music, like brand yeah, new shit. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, it could have been a fan, you know? Right. Who knows, but still just interesting um, to me. They find this, this guy's making weird, the other, the other guy who made the movie Kids made another movie called Gummo. And I mean, Quinn, yeah. I mean, Quinn, every, yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, do you know their name? I don't, but all I know is they make some fucked up movies. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Gummo um uh spring breakers trash humpers like he did a lot of fucking weird movies well you know what i should have got trash you humpers. for christmas <laughs> trash, the box set. <laughs> yeah. trash humpers is a fucking my friend my neighbor he also showed me that it's a fucking weird movie <laughs> i tried to watch just the trailer for gummo and the kid like out there with the bunny rabbit shit on his head <laughs> and i was just like i don't know i got the kind I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> I I met the guy, one of the guys in, in Gummo. Oh there's no, guy, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, that's a, not something one, you want to say. One, one of the guys that's a like dressed in drag in that movie. He's, he's, <laughs> like, he's wearing a dress. Uh, I met that guy. <laughs> he came to my house. I was, I yeah, he was at my old one of my old houses. I was like 20, 20 years old. <laughs> that's awesome. And You're the my, guy. <laughs> yeah, my friend was like. Oh, this is whatever his name is. Uh, he was in Gummo. I'm like, oh, fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> you know, right? How's your career? Mm. But <laughs> the things I know about Slint and this album is I thought it was the singer that had a breakdown. That's what I was told, is that the, the singer after... They, that they recorded, this is what I heard, that they recorded that album um, in order, like first song, second song, you know, and, and after the last song on the album, I heard that the singer had a mental breakdown and um, was like trying to like, like hurt himself and made his mom take, take him to the hospital and was like, and quit the band like right after the last song. And, right. and, the, and I could have, I could have misinterpreted that. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, a, a member. <laughs> was, well, yeah. I think whoever's saying, whoever, yeah, I, I, something about where, like, he says, I'm sorry, and hello, and good morning, Captain. Yeah. Like, like they said, whoever, whoever did that said that he was a puddle, like, he was covered in sweat at the end of, like, he put everything he had into that when the time he was yelling, I'm sorry, he was just a puddle. But I right. don't know if it was the, the, the singer or the drummer that was doing that vocal. I, I didn't okay. I'd have to rewatch it, mm -hmm. but um, in any case, yeah, I just good fucking art, man. <laughs> it takes you right to the edge. <laughs> and uh, the the one the one of the guitar players, uh, Dave Poe Poe yeah Poe yeah, I forget how to say his last name. He was in a band with Billy Corgan, um, uh, Zon in a band oh, called yeah, Zwan, Z W A N. Yeah, yeah. And um, he he was a guitar player in that. And he um, he's the he's the Asian dude in the group. So if you want to know who he is, that's who, <laughs> if you're if you're looking at it, you're like it's that guy. <laughs> Billy always has an Asian guy in his group. That's just how it is. He has a yeah. chicken and Asian. He's he's good. He's an equal yeah. opportunity employer. <laughs> um, and he tried to. I was told he killed himself, but I think he it was an attempt. I think he's still alive. Damn. Um, you think he like seriously like he almost killed himself in 2015 or something like that but um yeah after this album after slint put out this album they they haven't put out another one i think they no, put out it. 
they put they they have two albums one before this and I, I haven't listened to it and I heard it was just okay and then this one that everyone really likes and I like it too but and then they put out like a single from an, one of their albums the first album they re- re-released a single I think yeah. and then five or six years ago they did a little tour but they kind of have called it you know kaputs quit um but yeah it's a great fucking album i really like it I like um it's like it's kind of depressing you know <laughs> yeah but but it, yeah but it's good art you know you listen to it you're like this is fucking this is good it's quality shit well the peaks are amazing like when it takes off and you don't really see it coming then it's just like and then it comes back down it's a ride yeah, yeah. it's an art record it's it's exactly what it is yeah man I, it's not like you're gonna go to a show or you're gonna sit there and recite the lyrics. Like you're not gonna sing along to this shit. Like it's like he, the one guy's telling a story of like being at a fair or something like that. But like I said, the music is loud. Like you really have to like read the lyrics or really try to listen. So I don't think the point is to hear all the lyrics. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Right. No, for sure. For sure. Right. No, I like it like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So you brought up that um the, their documentary, which I haven't seen yet. I know I knew it was out there, but fun little fact. Um, my neighbor who showed me this has, has a friend who is actually one of our neighbors too. He lives across the street. Was, um, filmed that documentary. <laughs> Small fucking world, man. <laughs> This dude, um, the neighbor, um, who I've kind of, I think I've kind of met. He's our neighbor. I've seen him. He, he, that's what he does for a living. He's a camera dude. <laughs> he, he goes to LA all the time. He fucking, <laughs> this is, you know, that, that, that he flies all over the place, sometimes all over the world. Like he, that's what he does. And yeah, he, he filmed that documentary. <laughs> Damn. Well, if anybody has an extra copy of the record, it might be him. You have to ask. Right um yeah just kind of a small world you know funny little awesome. story I was, it was a cool record i liked it because i didn't know who the hell it was and then by the end of the album i, I knew who it was and they had a big impact in my life without even knowing it. well not a big impact but that that yeah the kid yeah the kid's soundtrack has been in my ears for 30 like going on 30 years now so right and that's i have no legs i have no legs i have no legs Kiss, and what is it what does the guy's shirt say that's singing that that's the fucking trivia right there oh i don't know i don't remember does kiss me on polish yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i've seen that fucking movie i don't know why but it's really a hard fucking movie. i tell people like have you ever seen kids and they're like no i'm like it's fucked up you want to watch it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a good movie Hey, it's all right. It's me, Casper. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, so fucking. <laughs> it's not. It's not even like something I want to be known for laughing at. But it's fucked up. Like you're like, wow. Like at the end, you're just like. I remember uh, someone, a punk, like a skater friend of mine, showed it to me. Let me sit there and watch the whole thing, and then she's like, "Don't you want to kill that motherfucker?" And I'm just like. Ugh. Or just not watch this for a while. Like, <laughs> this is fucked up. And then when I realized the guy who wrote that, like that was like his best movie, like as far as like most like you know like palatable, I guess. Sure. Because I saw the, the like I said the trailer for Gummo, and I was like, uh uh-uh. uh, no 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 no, we're should not watch- going down this fucking movie. road, man. You should watch it. It's a good. His most palatable movie is probably, my opinion, is Spring Breakers. Yeah. It's got uh, James Franco in it. Um, it's a little uh, girl's name. I don't know. I forget her name. Um, I don't know. She's fucking real famous. But there, she's in it. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. It's fucking weird. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right. Um, uh, there's a, this four, Florida rapper that's a fucking maniac. He's got like, I don't know. It's just like this. I don't know. I'm fucking... I'll check it out. Uh, it goes by Alien sometimes. Um, this Florida rapper is like this, like kind of a hillbilly, like cornrows and like fucking like weird facial hair. 
and it's about him basically. Um, Check it out. Yeah, it's it's a good movie. It's fucking fucking bizarre. It's a good movie. Um, yeah, man. Well, it was a good uh, pick, man. Tell yeah. your tell your 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 neighbor friend. It was a good one. I appreciate oh, it. Oh well, yeah. Um, it's time to go to the wheel. How about it? It is. Want me to go over the list real quick? Sure. I'll, I'll all bring right. all over. The wheel, the wheel of music. All right. So in the number one spot, we still have the Coco soundtrack. Number two spot, we have. Oh man, this is. Oh, this that's a free spot. It's still a free space, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, number three is Left Field Rhythm and Stealth. Number four, Mono Lord, the uh, album Your Time to Shine. Number five is Boogie Balook. The album is Volta. Number six is Billy Joel, The Stranger. Number seven, Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms. We now have number eight is Shellac. The album is A Thousand Hertz. Number nine is Hornet Leg. The album is Ribbon of Fear. And then, <laughs> gotta get rid of this damn thing. Number 10, Mammoth, Mammoth Weed Wizard Bastard. Uh, stutter, stutter, stutter. However you pronounce that one. Um, yeah, so those are the 10. Cool. Whenever, at, at your, uh, whenever you're ready there. All right. What are we gonna win? Huh. Our new car. Up, brand new car. New washer and dryer. What do we got for us? After you pay the taxes. The yellow always gets me. Num letter four. Letter, letter four. four. <laughs> Mono Lord. All right. Your time to shine. Mon and let this be known. We've done Mono Lord before. Their yeah. first album, um, Empress Empress Rising. And uh, so this is their newest one. What, what What's the name of the album again? Uh, that is Your Time to Shine. Your Cool. Radical. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Wheel, for bringing us such a <laughs> We really appreciate you. On that note, I will go ahead and thank the humans that watch the show too. Um, <laughs> thank <Hey>. you for. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always fun. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, tuning in, whatever you call it these days. Like, follow, subscribe. By now, you know where we are and what we're up to. So pass the word if you want to. Alex promises to wear a new skull cap next week to keep it interesting. So tune in for that. Oh yeah. I will. You just wait. Show how many. Show how many. Uh, how many. Um, how many nuggets of pot you have shoved up in the top there? Skull cap arrays. I got them all. That's right. All right, man. Well, do you have anything you want to say? Um, I love you all very much, and uh, I knew. I knew he wanted to thinking say. Thinking about you soon. I'll be thinking about you. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. Take her Bye -bye. easy. Oh, <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.